Okay, welcome everyone. Uh, today we will be looking at um, how to route audio from FL Studio into the analog world and then back from the analog world into FL. So using basically using a hardware insert type situation. And the way you can do this in FL Studio is let me clean up this session a bit. I've uh, tested it quite a bit um, beforehand. So the way you can do this is you you can, first of all, um, make sure you're on lo low latency. It doesn't really matter uh, your buffer size because your buffer size will be compensated. Um, but what will not be compensated is plug-in latency. So if you have this track, your original track, um, with a plugin that introduces a lot of latency, let's say, let's go to the extreme here, linear phase maximum, then I'll have to make this loop a little bigger in order for it to actually show up in one recording. And I press record now. So, yes, plugin latency will not be compensated. Um, for this uh so yeah just be aware that you don't have any any plugins in the chain uh that introduce latency before you go out into the analog world and also not after if after you go into the analog world just if you want to use this me method of recording uh if you want to yeah, if you want to record directly to the playlist, which is how I do it most of the time. Um, yes. Um, so what I have here is my original source track, which is where this kick drum is going. It's not routed to the master and not routed to any other buses. Again, the latency is an issue. If you if you have this in anywhere, like on a send or something, uh, that has uh, an EQ with latency or a compressor with look ahead or whatever that will sort of misalign your recording. So just be aware of that, right? And then I've got it going out to my WA76 and I have got the WA76 coming back in here. And that's literally it. I've armed the track. Well, FL Studio did it for me, obviously, once I select an input. Um, also, it's selected, since this is an audio track, uh, which is a new feature in the beta. Try it out. It's really great. Um, yes, uh, I've set it to be an audio track. And then when I selected the input in the mixer, it already selected the input here, which is wonderful. So, And it also shows a little red indicator for... Um, yeah, for the armed status. So, you know, you know that the audio you record is going to end up somewhere around there, which is cool. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, well, what else is there to say, uh, really? That's how it works. Um, use this, uh, <laughs> use this knowledge uh, with care, though. Uh, don't smash up your, comp like, don't smash your stuff so hard. Um, uh, not as hard as I do. Look at that. Wonderful sausage here. Um, wonderful. Um, so that is, uh, that is how you record. Sounds the same so it that is the recorded one if we compare it to the original one so it definitely has been compressed <laughs> that is definitely the result of an 1176 clamping down hard on whatever comes in um yes uh yeah, well, what else is there to say about this? Um, I've talked about latency. I've talked about um, I've I've talked about selecting your inputs right. Um, oh, uh, levels really important uh, in the uh, in the analog world. 
um, it's not really that much of a problem if you drive something harder. Um, <laughs> but if you go back into your interface, uh, do be sure to um, set your levels correctly so it doesn't clip. Because uh, your, depending on what kinds of con converters you have, um, they might sound really bad. <laughs> when they're clipping uh, most likely they will sound bad so um just be aware of that in this case i haven't made sure of that so the initial transient is absolutely clipping um uh let's let me show you that in an edison that's why i had a edison set up here so um let's send that back out to the compressor and uh we shall, we shall record another one here. Another one. Now we heard both of, both of them. They're slightly phasey because of the latency. But as you can see here in Edison. There appears to be a bit of audio that has gotten clipped um so yeah also this is a good way to like if you if you just wanna if you just wanna do one shots just set up an edison on the track where your compressor is coming back in and just do the one shot there and then select uh um trim side noise and you'll end you'll end up with a wonderfully chopped um sample um with you which you can then drag back into your session um yeah that's a that's a much easier way of doing one shots, I guess. But if you're if you're actually printing a whole track, like a whole mono track or a whole even even a stereo track, you could do this in stereo. Uh, should you choose a stereo output here, uh, um, a stereo output, I guess, here for a stereo compressor that I have, and then select the stereo compressor input here and then you could you could do this on a stereo track um and uh yeah yeah just just be aware of that <laughs> it works the same in mono as it does in stereo cool and nice um i have an sh1 this is uh this has been fun and yeah uh i don't know if you want to see me doing this stuff like live and reading chat and uh <laughs> and bantering and stuff um just check out the stream at check out twitch tv slash shroomhead underscore one and uh you'll you'll find that i also do uh tune reviews on tuesdays which is today actually so uh <laughs> later on i'm gonna i'm gonna stream uh, so yeah uh, yeah yeah thank you for watching and uh, I hope this helped you out. Goodbye.